Hey everybody. As you may know, I've been tracking the COVID stats, the death stats in particular, from the Office of National Statistics for England and Wales since the start of the COVID crisis. Uh, I've been keeping them on a spreadsheet and um, I've got a graph here with what appear to be the most salient facts, such as the, the overall death rate, uh, COVID deaths, uh, non, non-COVID deaths, all, all this kind of thing. And there's a few anomalies that, that I see cropping up this year. One is that the excess deaths are, have been consistently higher. This is the, um, so excess deaths I don't have on, on average, but uh, that's the difference between this blue line here and the red line, which is the period from 2015 to 2019, five-year average repeated each year because we didn't want to skew it with 2020-2021 data when we had these um, death spikes. Um, so what's interesting is that the, the orange line at the bottom here is when people have died in England and Wales with COVID mentioned on the death certificate. And that is normally because they've died within 28 days of a positive test. Okay, so hold on to that thought. This kind of sea green blue line here is the excess non-COVID deaths. So these are deaths above the previous five-year average, or the old five-year average, that are not are taking away the deaths that have been accounted for by COVID. And if we look closely at this period from kind of May 2023, you can see that the excess non-COVID deaths have been particularly high and consistently high. So if I, I've done the, the averages for these. So since July last year, so July 2021, uh, we've had like 60,000 COVID deaths and 35,000 non-COVID deaths, right? So it's nearly double attributed to COVID in some way. But since the 13th of May 2023, 26,000 COVID deaths, non-COVID 42,000. So it's flipped over the other way, right? So that's one issue. Well, what is causing all these excess deaths if it's not COVID? Okay. But that then brought up another issue because we've got the, the orange line here seems to be quite a consistent level of death still attributed to COVID, even though, even though that we know, for example, that the NHS in England has been told COVID's over, you don't need to take any precautions, it's, it's over, it's done. So where are all these deaths still coming from and how many people are still getting tested to produce this many positive results, to produce this many deaths within 28 days? So for that, we go on to coronavirus.data.gov.uk. And I thought we would check out the difference between, um, say, January 2021. Now, we're on testing here. So we're going to ignore the testing for January 21 because it was just kind of ramping up at that point. And then people doing a load of testing throughout 2021 into 2022. And then it's really trailed off to the point where almost nobody is getting tested today. But if nobody's getting tested today, how are we attributing all those deaths still to COVID? That's what's confusing me. So I've, um, I've taken kind of averages for January 21, January 22, and compared them to January 23. Okay, so we won't go into, I mean, I've just kind of taken a, a broad sample of the kind of seven-day rolling average for each one. So in January 21, we're going to ignore the, uh, the, the cases. January 22, we're going at around 40,000, hang on, January 22, no, we it hit actually uh, for testing. It hit one over like two million in one day. So we're going to say it, around an average of one and a half million for the month, as you can see here, right? Um, January twenty three, a fraction of that. We're looking at about fifty five thousand a day for the month, right? So let's go on to cases. Cases is kind of relevant in January twenty one. Um, so we're looking at, on average around 40,000 for for the month. That's rolling day average 37,000, okay? Now, so hold on to that. Lots more cases in January 22, but then there's a lot more testing. So January 22 cases, we're going maybe around 100,000 a day, maybe a bit more than that, 
8th of January is 80 odd thousand, so roughly. It, the precise numbers aren't super important. And then cases obviously very, very low, uh, averaging around 3,500 in January 23. But this is where it gets really interesting when you look at the deaths. So January 21, loads of deaths attributed to COVID. Now, if the cases were around 40,000 a day, okay, then we're getting maybe 1,100 average deaths per day in the month, something, something like that in January. Okay, so it is somewhere around there. Now, that is a mortality rate if you divide the deaths by the number of cases of 2.75%. So obviously, we're not looking at the previous uh, 28 days. Okay, um, but just comparing how many people were assigned as having COVID in the month compared to how many people died, it's around 2.753% ish. Now you do the same thing for January 22, when we saw that a lot more people were getting tested and a lot more people were going down as a, as a case, um, far fewer deaths, and then it's plummeted down to 0.2%, that's about one in 500 people, uh, the proportion of deaths to number of cases. Okay, but you come forward again to January 2023, and it's not much lower, as we saw on the original graph. It's not much lower. So we're still getting 100 or so deaths per day. Say, say it averages around 90 in January 23. But what's interesting is that that then gives, compared to the number of tests they've done, a mortality rate that is the same as January 2021 it's around 2.5%. Now, this then means that we need to ask a serious question. Nobody's getting tested, so there's very few actual cases, and yet we're being told that you've got a kind of a 1 in 40 chance if you're a case of dying in January of this year. So what is going on? So the, the death rate, we are being told, now for a case is the same as it was around in in this period sorry yeah in this period in 20 January 2021 the second big death spike and yet the NHS is being told that covid is over so the question i ask myself is whether these numbers these covid deaths death numbers the um are in some way being fudged or manipulated or inflated in order to make the non-COVID excess deaths less scary. That's the worrying thing for me, but I'll leave you to make up your own mind.